All the products in this video has been donated for testing. The methods used are outside the scopes of the manufacturers. Businesses and brands involved are not liable for the unconventional advice that may result. Equipment, medium or surfaces. Attempt at your own risk. My attempt is to be genuine and to give the best honest feedback and results for a fun, safe hobby free of bias. Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Makona Man at YouTube with a, another model video. Today I'll be sharing the existence, experimentation and uses of a whole host of base tints and chemicals from Northern Auto Paints Victoria, covering the brands Bodian and HIQ. The higher end and professional scale of automotive paints, finishes and thinners, which I can only compare to the budget brands I've tested to date from chain automotive stores. Surprisingly, so far, the prices are competitive, if not at some points a little cheaper. You will have to bear with me as I've only been given small sample sizes and none of them are in the original packaging or tint. Furthermore, a lot of these products can be purchased at touch up or small quantities absolutely perfect for our hobby the website is down below and worth checking out for international viewers i would assume that local small independent dealers and manufacturers would be similar and always worth trialing and testing something new Normally these paints come with instructions and are designed for spray guns with a 1.4mm nozzle and a 1-2 to two horsepower compressor. With the measuring cup you choose the ratio, put in the paint then thinner parts, normally 1 to 1, to achieve an even and smooth atomization and spray. Uh, further aspects such as maintenance, spray distance and conditions is up to the experience of the sprayer. I'll be utilizing the cheaper end of the spectrum, a 0.3mm steel gravity feed airbrush and a plastic tankless low psi low voltage presser. The thinning ratios and measurement of viscosity will be completely different. Straight into it, we will start with etch primer. Thoroughly shake and stir. Etch refers to properties to adhere to metal. The flow viscosity and pigment is reminiscent of Mr. Hobby line of surface and filler primers. Can be paired with standard or multi-purpose thinner at a ratio of one to three. I also find it works well on surfaces such as glass and ceramics. Perfectly fine for plastic. I was informed these products were manufactured in in Korea for the Kia brand of cars, which makes it very comparable to Japanese hobby products. This sprayed incredibly smooth, a very light gray finish, not too overwhelming for light colors, no orange peel or texturing, solidified in seconds and dry to the touch in minutes. Would recommend the full time to allow chemical curing. Adhesion, perfect. Switching to gun wash, a solvent far hotter than any thinner, pretty much chemically breaks down paint. With a single flush and wipe out of the cup, the airbrush was very quickly and efficiently cleaned. Again, this is bulk discount Mr. Hobby 1000 surface primer. For additional micro filling properties, you can add 10 to 30 percent talcum powder into the mix. 10 out of 10, very happy, and I want this to be my daily new primer. The second primer and next product is plastic primer. Ironically, it's a complete flip and comparable to hobby etch primers such as Mr. Metal Primer. It is as viscous as water, clear with urethane based properties. Just like the pigmented etch grey primer, it performs the exact same job as performing a barrier between a surface and the paint. Slight gloss properties, the advantage is incredibly convenient and easy to use. Disadvantage, no uniformed color no micro filling from my personal experience this will work on all surfaces plastic or metal alike the second spray I added equal parts pigment to show application and coverage interestingly the pigment did not dissolve too well and left a rough matte texture otherwise i would keep this as a transparent primer if the need calls for it base colors and thinners 
polyurethane lacquer base coat. In layman terms, is your color paint. Sits between the primer and clear coat. It comes in a viscosity of mud, very glossy, and is thin or reduced by a ratio of one to three. To test viscosity or how thin this liquid is, swell or spill the paint in a clear container. Transparent is ideal, opaque is too thick, no paint is too thin. Every thinner has a job. The choice is overwhelming, yet it's simple as the name dictates the job and personal preference. Standard is an excellent middle of the road. Easy to use, beginner friendly. Many are so happy they don't even explore other thinners. Can be used across all products, cheap and even used for cleanup. Decent flow, moderate drying time. Works in the scope for gloss and matte finishes. Back to ratios and atomization. Further notes to my transparent viscosity. I'm conducting some traditional artist airbrush learning patterns and exercises by spraying lines as fine as humanly possible and progressively getting them bigger and bigger as consistent as possible with as smooth as a gradient as possible from the outline to the paper followed by some shading all these activities that you very likely wish to do on your craft or hobby pieces the outcome also depends on airbrush condition nozzle size air pressure and distance but this is pretty ideal Fast thinner. Common assumption is speed of work and curing, but it's more related to finish. Application is more niche and ideal for metallics or matte finishes. Being more expensive, it's not doing gloss finishes or this blue any favors. Increased issues such as overspray, orange peel or textured finishes are likely or commonplace. On the other hand of the spectrum, we have blending thinner or slow drying thinner, identical if not comparable to leveling thinner in the hobby world. This slows down the drying time, leaving the paint to be in a wet state for much longer, which allows the paint to land on the surface in a liquid state level, gloss surfaces to keep some form of clarity and everything to dry and harden in a uniform, even manner without distortion or frosting. You'll also have improved flow as the paint is also leaving the airbrush in a liquid state. Easier spraying with thicker viscosities. It is a whole lot more expensive for standard and not too useful for matte primers and metallics. If you're doing gradient shading fine line work it also improves atomization. Fantastic product will be using it a lot more. Outside of the body and brand is multi-purpose thinner. This product is billed as a one in all. Some circles going as far as recommending this thinner for paints outside of the lacquer polyurethane line such as acrylics and water bases. It leans closer to the fast drying thinner and has the worst compatibility and performance, a product I choose not to use. A big hamper on spraying is the constant changing of colors and cleaning of your tools and equipment. Paint buildup can lead to poor performance or outright failures. Using standard thinner as a cleaning agent is time consuming and a waste a lot of product. Gun wash is a far hotter solvent that breaks down and dissolves paint and flushes it out far quicker. Liquefying anything that may have dried out and clogged the nozzle. It is not suitable as a thinner or paint stripper as it can damage paint surfaces or plastics. Another product I'll be picking up and regularly using as it's streamlined and has made my cleaning regime far quicker and more efficient. With different base colors, they are produced using different pigment materials. Depending on the quality of the paint and pigment density, the behavior of the paint and how opaque can diff low quality paints can have wildly different effects. We'll be doing a pigment test on some spoons. Example, black reflects the least amount of light and has the most easy and best coverage. On the other hand, white reflects the most amount of light and uses a very expensive pigment, titanium. Spraying over different undercoats results in different light reflection and how bright and vibrant the paint may be. It's amazing to see that this paint is consistent. Yellow is also notoriously hard. Just like with the blue, all of these have been diluted with standard thinner at a ratio of one to three. Over dilution can result in more coats required or 
poor coverage. All base coats also need to be protected by a top coat. Many options are available. We will attempt the gloss 1K first. For easier flow and reduce gloss, you can reduce from a ratio of 1.3 to 1.5. Too thin and it will be semi-gloss, but you can build up with layers. It is the hardest finish to operate as it will orange peel and can splatter from the overspray. Finishes can appear a bit rough or gravelly. This is all can be sanded and polished. Not ideal for a small nozzle. Otherwise, these paints are fantastic. Very comparable to the likes of Mr. Hobby or Guy Notes. Good adhesion, decent flow, vibrant and fast drying. These are the qualities you're looking for in a good paint. Another type of base coat, metallics, is a reflective pigment simulating a metallic surface. Even though reflective and glossy in nature, it performs better when drying fast and using fast thinner. Thinning, preparing and spraying is exactly the same as base paints, a 1 to 3 ratio paint to thinner. Like black paint, it is very forgiving pigment density and coverage wise. Metallic tints come in gold and silver which can be mixed and blended into a whole range of tones and colors. Like in hobby paints they come in chunky medium and fine pigments this is a fine example or extra premium metallizers which buffs to an almost mirror finish. With no effort the spoon test was very reflective and quite smooth. With the approximate Approximately 100ml quantity we had, I'll be using a percentage of it to do a large prop resembling a fantasy weapon. This performs just like Mr. Hobby and is very easy to use. Coverage wise, I only used about two to three dollars worth paint on this single piece. The silver also did not disappoint. To finish with base coats, touch on finishes and the 1K gloss from the previous sec segment, urethane lacquer paint can be reactivated when thinner or lacquer thinner is added back to the surface. A fear of multiple layers of paint activating and mixing among each other when a thick or hot top coat is applied. Unlike cheap paints, this does not occur as it has a chemical resistance and the clears are not overly hot or the ability to melt through other layers of paint. These issues are more common with cheaper generic auto brands. All of this can be resolved with 2K, 2-pack or 2-part paint. A mix of a resin finish or additive, acceleration hardener and a little thinner. Example of an 811 blend as the first part is normally very viscous. This adds extra protections from abrasives, touch, UV and liquids. And I'm excited to play for, for the first time. First, I want to test the base materials to see if they will stick and apply cure like 1K paints for the hobby. I opened a little bit with thinner. It immediately frosted over and after drying, just sat on the surface like a powder, which was easily removed with my finger, which resulted in the same finish that I started before. Mixing it with a hardener did adhere the matting agent to the surface, but frosted and gave a gravelly texture. I was advised that this agent is no longer carried or made, but I pushed it due to its similarity to matte base in the Mr. Hobby Tamir world. You can fudge it with a little bit of use of resin, but mostly designed for adding directly into paint. The HS hardener did give me a pretty decent clear result, though a bit too satin sheen for my taste where some builds I'm after an absolute flat matte without frosting spots or lightening the color slightly. I only add about 10% of hardener or 10 to 1 to just set it off a bit slower as I've got anxiety of it drying and hardening inside my airbrush. Flushing and cleaning with gun wash gave me no issues. Unlike hobby paints, the matting agent does not like gloss clear at all. Playing around with a two part clear and adding the matte agent produced far superior results where it started frosting by cutting back the matte I was able to get quite a clear finish. On the glossier end of the spectrum, we'll start with flash clear. This is marketed to be the fastest drying clear. 
properly mixed, you can buff and sand it within half an hour. Viscous as water and it's absolutely effortless. Just pour in the airbrush, spray clean. Well, at least with my first attempt. Big fan, dries on its own. Very cheap and will never use a classic 1K clear ever again. In two part, I did eight to 10 part clear, one part HS hardener. The results were exactly the same as if I was not to use hardener, did dry a bit quicker and I'm sure that it would have had a harder, stronger, more scratch UV resistant finish. Second test, fast hardener, same ratio, eight to 10 flash clear to hardener. Also sprayed pretty well, didn't dry out too quickly or fast and was able to flush the airbrush out with gun cleaner. The last test was half, half HS hardener and fast hardener with eight to 10 parts flash clear. The hardeners do mix well but I'm just happy with the HS pretty much. And again, just no hardener at all. Maybe for something like props or wargaming minis. Performance wise, the Fast has a bit more of a frost to the sheen. HS is pretty much like glass and the mix is ever so slightly inferior. Take care in not over mixing. If stored or left out, it will turn into jelly. The same jelly as mixing lacquers with Vallejos or the polyurethane acrylic waters. With the heat test, I've decided to settle on flash clear by itself and sprayed it on an existing project that I want to have very glossy that has multiple layers of paint. Uh, it's mostly a heat test to see that the layers don't melt into each other. It's very gentle. I can spray it quite thick and it doesn't uh, damage the surface or anything and it sits well with enamel or oil washes and weathering effects without cracking or causing any issues. Flash clear can be found in auto, any automotive, retail, outlet and guitar shops at a third of the price per litre as full colour tints or paints. Two part paints or clears used to give me a lot of anxiety of what it will do to my airbrush or stuffing up, but I found it to be far more easier to use than standard paint. The hardness can also be added to any paint or primer, turning it into a two part. This next experiment can work with any matting agent, not just this thick one. We will make up a batch of flash clear. 8 to 1 ratio with the two hardeners. Then progressively keep adding little quantities of matting agent in ratios. First starting at 10%. We're going to keep adding from a satin semi-gloss all the way to flat matte and document the ratios. Spoon 2 is the double amount or 20% in total. Spoon 3 is 50% or another 3 units on top of the last. 4 is doubling the whole amount again at a 400% or 1 to 1 ratio. And last, putting a lot more in close to 200% over saturating the flash clear with matting agent. Solid flash clear is very intense and glass like. At 10 to 20 percent it does soften it a bit. At 50 percent a lovely satin semi-gloss and it will frost up further with a little more. One to one is the nicest flat look I've gotten so far out of the matting agent. Anything past that is the finish being ruined or frosting over completely not seeing the base coat. If all of that is too hard, you can buy two-part matte clear with dedicated base and hardener like HIQ. I did a loose two-part mix matte base with one part hardener and no thinner as it was already very viscous. Point two is just a few drops. I love these telescopic pore spouts and see them on a couple of brands. Shake it very thoroughly. Two-part matte base, a dribble of one part hardener, then mix further. The viscosity is fantastic and like water unlike the other solid putty matte base, but you can add a drop of thinner at this point. Pour an airbrush. Pot life is about half to 45 minutes. Thinner may extend that even further. This is also really strong, really matte. I did a very thick coat and it almost went chalky. Instead of two medium coats, should have only did one light one. Otherwise, very happy. We'll be using it, but I'm sitting on a few litres of it.
I am very excited to share the last product. It's a secret menu item and a base tint used in making many, many of the paints you can buy. You bring a code or a color paint chip to a paint shop and they can blend anything between tens to hundreds of different combinations. This is clear tinter and it's used for many different effects we take for granted in the hobby candies, pearls, you name it. A milky color, it has the viscosity and properties of any of the other paints we've used, but it's just that clear. No gloss, no sheen, no matte. The spoon will remain exactly the same. What you mix into it and the percentages is where things get really wild. And unlike the plastic primer black pigment test, there will be no texture issues. Test two is blending our own 1K hobby grade matte clear. Equal parts matte base and and clear tinter. Thin the whole lot a 1 to 3 ratio finish to thinner and spray it all the same as if you were using the Mr. Hobby Tamir Guy Note variants. And I got the exact same finish slightly sheeny but if I was to use the HIQ blend and add it a bit more it probably would be perfect and dead flat. The third test is making my own clear candies. Clear color you spray over silver for an ultra shiny metallic look or for other shading gradient effects. I will mix one part blue into two parts clear tint, three part thinner to the mix and spray very thin coats. I like to do a lot of subtle works and have far more control than what's already available such as Mr. Hobby. I would likely to tone down the color and probably go even as far as 20 or 30 percent color to tint requiring more coats and more control. Otherwise this is just straight up clear paint and I've got the perfect candy. Definitely keen on mixing a whole lot more colors for myself. Originally I was going to do a series of experiments doing just this but with gloss clear. The final test is throwing in some pigment and the most fun of them all, pearl. This is some cheap art store pearl and mixing equal parts clear tint to the pigment. I wanted to go for more of a transparent effect but it came out really strong but really effective. I love the luster so much and much like the candy would probably recommend more of a mix between 20 to 50 percent unless you want a solid pearl coat base coat like this. This is definitely comparable to high-end automotive pearls and I think I'll definitely be going pigment shopping. I do have to apologize to Mr. Hobby and other brands don't think I'll be buying your stuff anymore this concludes the video it was a monumental task that I've spent over three months on this project a big thank you to Northern Auto paints their representative came by and we did some follow-up tests to prove my findings and show my results which they're very happy in the way that I will be presenting this video. I'll be very happy if this has opened any doors, answered questions, or given people the confidence to try and make their own paints or make changes to their own hobby or industry. Without the donation of paints, this would have been unaffordable or not have done for well over several years in many videos. It has been a very worthwhile experience and I'm happy I've done it, regardless if this video does well or not. If you've gone this far, I would not mind a like and comment only if you feel obliged. Happy to answer any further questions. Thank you very much for watching and as always until next time, stay tuned for further content. All the links and ratios, formulas are in the description section down below. Catch you guys later. Present day. Present time. <laughs>